German car maker recently launched their much awaited mid segment SUV Volkswagen Tiguan. It is available from two trim levels, five variants, two engine and gearbox options and five color options. A lot to choose from. Well, today I have with me 1.5 liter TSI petrol charged GT+. So let's have a closer look at this one specifically. The Tiger, like its DNA cousin Skoda Kushak, is based on the MQB AO platform. The Tiger looks unmistakably like a Volkswagen, especially from the front. The white grille is flanked by the attractive all LED headlamps, along with the squared off front edges of the bonnet, helps the Tiger look quite butch and in your face. In profile, the strong shoulder line looks purposeful and the dual-tone 17-inch alloys look quite sporty. The design of Tiguan is pretty distinctive, smart and sharp. There's a lot of chrome happening right here in the middle with a signature Volkswagen grille. Uh, the bonnet also has some chrome uh, touches to it. From the rear, the most distinctive feature on the car is this LED light that stretches across the whole bonnet of the car. It looks pretty sharp along with the shark fins right on the top. The Tiger has a decent boot space, it's 385 litres, so it is pretty good for your long rides. Interiors of the car are uncluttered and smart. They seem pretty good quality. I won't say it's very premium. It's got little touches of premium in it. For example, the steering wheel. It's got slight leatherette. It looks premium, but there's hard plastic in the middle. Although the logo badge here right in the center is has a little chrome touch in it. The dashboard is also of hard plastic. So uh, it's not all premium. It has few touches of premium. For example, this uh, grey patch right here on the dashboard, it looks nice. What I don't understand is these fake buttons right here on the panel, they don't really make any sense, right? But the gear shift uh, stick is pretty nice. Now what is really interesting in this car is the 10-inch infotainment system. It's got your uh, Android and Apple CarPlay. It's got wireless charging, you can put your phone right here, you don't need to carry any extra batteries. Uh, there is enough space uh, in the center as well, there's an armrest, you can stretch it. There's decent space, not a lot, there's two cup holders in the center. The dashboard is also pretty spacious, this is cool dashboard, you can, you can, this is a cool box as well, so you can uh, use it to cool your drinks and stuff on the door panels. There is enough space for your bottles, etc. So it's done pretty neatly. You have a lot of space in the cabin, which is great for Indian families. It's got a sunroof as well, although it's not panoramic, but it's pretty decent. Now looking at the upholstery, it looks pretty great. It looks that it is tastefully done. You've got this red threading running across the seats, but they do not look very, very premium. You know, this is a Volkswagen and this is top model. So if I am spending that much money, I would want a lot of luxury inside the car and in the cabin space because the Korean car makers are, are offering all of those features in a very, uh, in a very good amount, right? Now the climate control on the panel here, in the beginning it might take you some time to get used to it. Uh, but once you do, it's pretty easy, it's one touch and it is very convenient. It's got a 8 inch instrumental cluster and you can change a lot of modes, you can host a lot of features here, it's right here on the steering wheel, it's got different modes. You've got two C point chargers here, the other cars give you a USB charger, this one is giving you a C type, so that's an improvement. The high resolution display looks premium and the graphic fonts and touchscreen response is top drawer. Although what it's missing is the 360 degree camera. This top GT 1.5 litre variant comes with automatic headlamps, rain sensing wipers, tilt and telescopic adjustments. So there are decent number of features for sure. The rear is pretty comfortable. There is adjustable headrest even in the middle row with armrests and two cup holders. But what I think is that 
the middle person will not be very comfortable because uh, the air vents and the seat type charger is somewhere in the middle so there is not enough leg room for the person who's sitting in the middle uh, although there is enough head room so i would say that uh, two people can sit here very comfortably it will be a little clustered for the one who's sitting in the center although it's got a separate seat belt the footboard is not flat it's got this bunch right in the center and that is a good safety feature to have in the car that's also what makes the space for the center person a little less but that's good we need safety The Tiger comes in two engine options, 1 liter petrol turbocharged uh, which produces 115 PS at 178 Newton meter of torque and the bigger one that comes in 1.5 liter four cylinder TSI turbocharged engine which is this one the GT line produces 150 uh, power at a radical 250 newton meter of torque which is really great that is one of the best features of this car is the punchy torque that is available right from the beginning and till the end no matter how stuck you are in traffic the you just put the pressure on pedal and there you go it's an absolute blissful drive it's a high tech unit 2 and features cylinder deactivation tech which basically shuts down two cylinders while cruising on highways to aid fuel efficiency the engine comes with either a 6 speed manual or a 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission in the city the engine and gearbox combo feels ideal because the shifts are smooth and jerk free thanks to the torquey motor the gearbox doesn't really have to work that hard as shifts are kept to a minimum even when it has to work it does a wonderful job the suspension on the car is good it works silently both in cities and highways it takes all the city bumps in its stride although on high speeds if you suddenly have to brake then you're going to feel a little bit of jerk having said that while you're on high speeds this car is an absolute delight on corners it hardly works as an suv but a hatchback because it's just too awesome on corners it sticks to the ground there is absolutely minimum body roll in the car when you're taking sharp turns When it comes to safety the ESP is standard on all variants and this one the top model gets a uh, six airbags there is hill control there's got uh, it's got disc brake in the front and drum at the rear it's got reverse parking camera and airbags in the front it's comfortable and the top speed on this car is really great however i can spill that out right here but for safety as soon as you cross 80 km per hour the car starts beeping although it beeps just one but when you cross 120 it keeps beeping continuously so that's an additional safety feature it's a german machinery the tech and the driving experience is just brilliant on this car i would buy it just for sheer driving pleasure In the end I would say this is a comfortable four seater instead of a five seater there are no diesel options available and the Korean competitors are offering hell loads of tech in the car but if we can get past that I would say Volkswagen Tiger is a very good option to buy simply because the drive is fantastic the safety is top notch on the car and it looks absolutely stunning Hi, I'm Vikram Gaur and you're watching India Ahead. The car that we have to talk about today is the Mercedes GLA 200. This is the petrol variant of their hot-selling small SUV and we're going to tell you why it's in such high demand.
When it comes to the design of the new Mercedes GLA, we can see that it's all grown up now. Unlike its predecessor, it now carries a higher roof, it's got a more SUV kind of stance which is sporty, looks macho and tough, while it also carries that Mercedes design language of having these uh, rounded uh, sort of surfaces rather than sharp edgy creases. Uh, to start off with, up front we've got a really bold uh, Mercedes logo that sits in the grille and you've got uh, dashes of chrome uh, that run along both sides of it as well. And in the lower bumper you also get this nice chrome insert that just looks brilliant. And uh, the headlights, they're a piece of work themselves. So you've got these LED performance uh, lights with uh, DRLs housed in there as well and uh, they just look fantastic. Move along to the side and uh, you can see that the car now carries a more proportionate stance. It rides on 18 inch wheels and uh, you've got these nice squared off wheel arches which again has carried over from the Mercedes SUV line. And uh, obviously the little bits that you want uh, like roof rails, they're on this as well. Summing up the package is the back where you get uh, a nice chrome diffuser that houses uh, both uh, the exhaust pipes in there and it looks uh, absolutely stunning and brings out that sportiness that this car is all about. And the rear lights, again, they are Mercedes lights, so you know that they light up really nice at night. The cabin of the GLA has this really nice plush feel to it. It's spacious, they've done a great job of space allocation overall for the front and the rear. And when it comes to the seats, I think Mercedes has done a stellar job in the way that these seats are contoured. Of course, the front seats are electronically adjustable and uh, you also get a memory function for both the driver and the co-passenger uh, where they can set it for up to three settings depending on which family members are going to be seated where. At the back, the bench is a true surprise because uh, the seats have been contoured in such a manner that it's really comfortable to be seated back there. You've got ample headroom as well as ample legroom. Of course, bringing the cabin all together and uh, giving you that extra level of joy is the panoramic sunroof that uh, sort of just lets you enjoy this car that much more. If we talk about the technology on board, it's a chapter all by itself. To start with, you get a digital instrument cluster with multiple screens to browse through to access vital information. It is intuitive and easy to use with controls mounted on the steering as well as this neat touchpad that you get on the center console. Next up is the massive 10.25 inch infotainment display from which you get access to navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto and even color settings to change the lighting in the cabin. The Mercedes-Benz MBUX telematic solution is also on board. Other key elements include wireless charging, USB-C ports, and a very powerful climate control system. What really won me over with the GLA 200 is the engine. All right, you'd expect a Mercedes to be refined and powerful, which the GLA lives up to. But when you hear that it has a 1.3 liter engine under the hood, that kind of blows your mind. How does it do this? make a tiny engine deliver that level of performance and refinement? Well, I might have to make a trip out to the Mercedes-Benz factory to find out. But for now, let me tell you about this engine. It delivers a healthy 163 bhp and 250 newton meters of torque. You get multiple drive modes and you can do the 0 to 100 km dash in just 8.7 seconds. It's paired with a 7-speed automatic transmission which does an excellent job of seamlessly shifting gears. Take it out for a spin and you'll be surprised as to how agile this machine is. The ride quality is commendable as is the feeling of the steering. Body roll is at a minimum too. Out on the ghats, the Mercedes GLA felt right at home. It made it look easy to stick to its line, fly around corners and power up quickly for quick overtaking maneuvers. Sadly, the GLA doesn't get the 4MATIC all-wheel drive system, but that really isn't something to complain about because if that's what floats your boat, Mercedes does deliver the 4MATIC on the diesel version of this car. As for the mileage, the GLA 200 has given us a steady 16.8 uh, out on the highway, while it does 9.5 km to the liter up in the hills. Overall, on our drive, we have averaged about 13.4 km to the liter, which, if you ask me, over a very drive of different terrains through highways, cities, up a mountain, and clocking about 850 odd kilometers. This is a commendable feat.
Overall, with the GLA, what you get is a car that's every bit a Mercedes. When we talk about safety, it ticks all those boxes as well. You've got attention assist, uh, all sorts of warnings to tell you that there's a car in front of you while you're driving down the road, as well as seven airbags, uh, ABS, ESP, you name it, it's on board. So Mercedes has ensured that they've ticked off all the right boxes with this. And you get a car that's high on performance, high on luxury, and of course, very high in demand. Hey, I'm Vikram Gaur and you're watching India Ahead. Today we're at the new Hyundai Motor India corporate office where we're going to be catching up with uh, Tarun Garg, the Director of Sales and Marketing and Service at Hyundai Motor India Limited. Hello sir. Hi Vikram. Good to see you. Good to see you. So sir, before we get started on talking about BEVs and the big announcement that Hyundai just made, uh, I saw you on TV, you were with uh, Amitabh Bachchan at the KBC event and uh, that looked like a special thing and I think that's a great uh, initiative as well. Yeah, as you know, uh, under our Beyond Mobility program, we have been taking all such initiatives. And we believe very strongly the way Mr. Bachchan has really evolved himself and how he has really changed, you know, uh, in fact, he's changing the very rules of the game and the, how he has been able to engage with the Indian customers. I believe that was a very, very natural kind of a, a, a partnership. And we are very, very happy that we went into this kind of a partnership. I think it's amazing what they do. And I think that that prize money goes to the right people to help them sort of take their lives forward. In fact, this is very important, Vikram, because, uh, you know, KBC is reflecting about the aspirations of India and how it is really motivating people to improve themselves. So we believe at Hyundai, we also try to really meet the aspirations of people, to give them some quality time and also, you know, ensure them that we are also trying to improve ourselves as with the changing times, with the changing technology. And, you know, they can really look up to Hyundai for, for, for their future mobility needs. So, sir, I'll give you a little anecdote. Mr. Bachchan is born on October 11th. He's six foot two, and he's left-handed. I'm born on October 11th. I'm six foot two. I'm left-handed. Oh my God! But <laughs> bank balance is hai. But you're here with us, and uh, that's another common thing. But uh, <laughs> so getting down to business, sir, uh, on the serious front, uh, Hyundai made a big announcement about uh, uh, a large sort of electric play. So could you shed some light on this uh, six uh, BEV? Uh, plan that Hyundai is rolling out. Yeah. So Vikram, basically, as you know that uh, sustainability is a very key pillar of our beyond mobility right. in addition to innovation and intelligent technology. So we, we strongly believe at Hyundai that you know, we are responsible for the well-being of the future generation and we have to kind of play our part in terms of leading uh, you know, mobility towards cleaner mobility. And that is how we have announced that we are going to expand our BEV portfolio to six okay. by 2028 and we are going to invest about 4,000 crores under this program. And there's a very important aspect of it that, you know, when we're talking about BEVs, we are saying that we are going to also introduce a, a eGMP platform, yes. which is an electric global modular platform of Hyundai Motor Group. And that is a very, very distinct platform, which gives us a lot of advantages in terms of, you know, introducing these BEVs. Because not only does it give us very easy scalability and modularity in terms of body types, in terms of length of the vehicle, but also there are a lot of uh, positive things like, you know, it gives us much more interior space, it gives us flexibility of seating options, etc, etc. So we believe very strongly that this eGMP uh, you know, platform is going to give us a, a good edge in terms of, uh, you know, BEVs. Okay. So, sir, so, uh, this 4,000 crore that you mentioned, this is something that's going to go down towards this uh, eGMP platform that you have mentioned? Actually, this is the, the money which we are committing towards development of battery electric vehicles. So some of the vehicles will be based on the eGMP platform. Some of the vehicles will also be kind of derived on the IC platform. Okay. Because th the advantage there is that we get a advantage of a volume and localization to start with. So what we are saying is probably 50-50, which means out of the six models, maybe approximately three on the eGMP platform and three on the uh, on the derived IC derived platform. Okay. And when we're looking at uh, six uh, products, obviously it's a, across an entire range of uh, uh, you know segments. I know that we cannot get too much into product details at this stage, but uh, what would be the segments that we're looking at? You know, or body types, if you want to yeah, yeah, share that. Of course. So we are looking at both mass as well as mass premium segments. In terms of body types, as you know, that SUVs uh, uh, are the flavor of the season. So we are going to focus on SUVs because the contribution of SUVs to the Indian market keeps on going up. Yeah. So what we have said is, it's going to be SUVs, CUVs, sedans. So it's going to be a mix of 
all these body types because this is what a problem Indian customer wants and this is what that is why we want to primarily focus on. At the same time, we will keep on taking feedback from the market and like I said, the eGMP platform, the advantage is that you know, we have a lot of flexibility yeah. and uh, so that, so we can quickly incorporate any customer feedback in terms of body type as well. And lastly, sir, uh, you know, we've spoken about the fact that we've got six cars coming in. It's an exciting time for Hyundai. You know, what is Hyundai's read on the EV market? Like, what is the trend that you see for India uh, going forward? Look, uh, that's an interesting one and that's not such an easy question to answer and we believe that yes, market is clearly evolving and customers are moving towards EV. At the same time, the process will take some time. Uh, as per the IHS forecast, we are probably the industry would be give and take about 175,000 in 2028. So that is one part of it. The second part of it is that performance is going to play a very important role also. I mentioned about the eGMP platform. Yeah. You know, what I when I say performance, what I mean is that the, the top speed could be 260 kilometers per hour. The range flexibility could be as much as 800 kilometers. Wow. You know, so I think these are some of the things which are going to be very important going forward that not only in terms of design, in terms of performance, in terms of flexibility, we are going to really give the customer a vehicle of his choice which will really remove the range anxiety as well as give him that feeling of yes, he's getting a great performance. Well, it's great to see Hyundai doing this. You gave us our first EV with the Kona and uh, now we're seeing this entire rollout happening. It's definitely an exciting time. Thank you for shedding so much light on this, sir. Thank you very much, Vikram. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm in conversation with uh, Hardeep Brar, who's the VP as well as the head of marketing and sales at Kia India. Hello, Hi. sir. Hi. Sir, you've got this brilliant new car that you've uh, showcased to the yeah. world today. Uh, can you just walk us through some of the highlights of the Karens? Yeah. So, Karens is, uh, uh, we are positioning it uh, for uh, between all the six and seven seater vehicles and it's a true blend of an SUV and MPV. It gives you a design uh, which, uh, which is very, very bold. Uh, looks like an SUV uh, when you look at the ground clearance or the height of the car and when you go inside it gives you the space of an MPV. So um, you know uh, customers who are looking at space as well as uh, you know bold look, look at an SUV are the ones who would uh, love this car. And when we try and define a customer for the current, how do you see that customer? Like, what is that yeah, yeah. The demographic? Customer, yeah, the customer would be uh, the one which is uh, young, uh, maybe uh, 30 to 40 years old, has uh, small children and uh, also have parents uh, and they want to go together on a vacation. You know, I think uh, that's where it uh, fits in perfectly, even for the uh, family with uh, two uh, adults and two children and they need a lot of space to move around and go for a vacation with a lot of uh, luggage along with it. So it can uh, fit in perfectly well into any of these segments. It's a very stylish looking vehicle, yeah. sir. And I think that uh, the yeah. segment that is coming out in is a, a new one. Yeah. So uh, are you nervous about having a car coming out <laughs> and creating a segment of your own? No, I, I think uh, people have uh, given a lot of love to Kia and we really thank our fans and customers uh, who have given a lot of love. And you know, what they have loved about uh, Kia cars is the design, the features, uh, which they, uh, we, which they like about the car and on top of that uh, the high secure 10 point safety package that we have given in this car is already getting very good reviews from the people in this forum uh, especially to mention you know these 10 safety features are standard across all variants and uh, I, I keep on mentioning again and again uh, the the six airbags which comes as a standard is a huge hit amongst uh, the people i think that's a fantastic uh, stand to take having six airbags on board across variants that's uh, it's something that we've not seen. Yeah. And I think uh, Kia has done a lot that we've not seen. Yeah. Uh, you have your uh, dealership network also that's growing rapidly. That's right. So would you like to shed a little light yeah. on that? So currently we have uh, around 198 showrooms across the uh, sorry, 198 cities and we have 339 touch points and we want to expand it to uh, 400 uh, touch points across about 225 cities by end of next year uh, so that we can get closer to customers and also, uh, you know, as you know, digitally uh, things are becoming, uh, it's uh, digital is the new normal. So we are also now would be giving uh, a live tracker. Uh, we are already giving the live tracker, but now you can have a live consultation with our customers oh. uh, and also they can, sitting from their homes, they can see their cars getting the service. So they don't need to really come to a touch point for them. Our person is available to go to them as and when they require. And Kia has done a lot on the digital front as yeah, well. So yeah. that's uh, that's something that's very core to uh, marketing and yeah, sales. That's right. How, yeah. how has that performed for you, sir? Yeah, it has done extremely well. As I was mentioning, uh, last year we had a live tracking. So when somebody picks a car from your home, 
uh, you can actually see where exactly your car is because that was something which people didn't trust. They were felt that you know the, the driver may take car somewhere else. He can track his car, and uh, as I mentioned, they didn't know how the car is getting service. Now we are giving them cameras uh, next year to see how what is really happening in the car, in which uh, component of the car is getting uh, uh, you know uh, worked upon. And last year we also started uh, something called a, a Digi Connect wherein customers, because of COVID, they were not willing to come to our showrooms. Now they can, sitting at their homes, uh, they can connect with our uh, uh, consultant in the showroom. In fact, if they want to connect with uh, their family members who are sitting in other cities, so they're an option to connect those people also. And three of them sitting at three different places can connect with our uh, uh, sales consultant in the showroom and they can take a look and feel of the car sitting from their respective places. So this has been a big hit and uh, as I said, digitization is at the core of uh, whatever we do and we will keep on bringing uh, new uh, features in our digitization strategy to take care of all the customers. Well, we look forward to all of that, sir. Thank you. So before we leave, just one last question.